Welcome to our first full court press of 2024. I'm Glenn Kinley and I'm Lainey Gerber. We are back after the winter break, but winter is definitely not taking a oh, break. No. We're trying to bring the summer vibes to the pink. <laughs> we're trying, but we're not succeeding. It no. was kind of ugly out there. The basketball not nearly as ugly. In fact, not yeah. ugly at all. And we start with a matchup that we didn't get. To, we did, we did get to see. We're glad it didn't get canceled. Definitely none other than Junction City and Manhattan. It's a really hot rivalry enough to melt the snow. The game definitely lives up to that. Jason Kim into the lane through the air just changes his momentum up there. Jackson Austin right in front of the Manhattan bench gets three and they're a little quiet. Ian McNabb fighting for the rebound gets the put back though and he gets another one after. Larkin Turner off of Taco <laughs> back and forth we go in this gym tonight. Max Denard has the answer for the Indians. And like I said, they're just battling this one out. But Manhattan comes away with a 65 wow. to 64 win Went in this rivalry. Went down the wire. Yeah, the girls open this rivalry Friday night for us, though. Janie Hilgers lobs this one right up and into the net. I was expecting a dunk to come flying in, honestly. <laughs> that shot was up there. Switching sides, though, same result. Emery Rulipson with the layup. JC working the clock down low into bucket land. Now Bailey Bush is working for that rebound on the other side, yeah, throws up a shot after, and it falls in. Sarah Rexrode adds to the Blue Jays total, but it is a Manhattan night tonight. MHK is written all over this game and gets a 46 to 9 win. All right, let's bring it back on here to Topeka for another rivalry game, which means Rural gets to pull out their favorite T-shirts. Check them out. And the Hayden students. They even that, styled them a little. They're bit. always <laughs> loud, but they're even louder in a game like this. Action mm -hmm. starts with that Ballard kid, Laney. You might be familiar. <laughs> Wing three. He didn't make many friends in the Hayden gymnasium, but he made a lot of shots. And Hayden's first bucket comes from Cooper Grace. Nice mid-range pull-up. You can call that jumper graceful. I would. I would. And now, mm -hmm. welcome to the Amari Jones show. Two or three defenders on him. Banks home the layup. Jones absolutely in the zone in the first half. Reverse layup. You can't guard him. Mm -mm. Guess who now? Amari Jones again. The 6'1 <laughs> senior putting on a clinic in this one. Man. Hayden trying to keep things close. This is Grace again. Count the basket. And he was fouled. He'll go to the line. But Amari Jones, he might have picked up a couple college offers just from this game alone. He can shoot it too. That's simply not fair. 14 in the first half from Jones. Nice. He scored 20. Junior Blues win 62. 29. Man, what a game there. One of the best games we've had thus far this season was on the girls' side there at Hayden. Mm -hmm. Kalia Fulton starting us off here. She's going to drive through traffic. Lots of defense there, but she still finds a way to score it. Ooh. Wasting no time. <laughs> Letting them know yeah. on the other end, Maddie Vickery, all sorts of space. Despite the snow, the bank stayed open tonight. Ah. Fulton doing mm -hmm. the passing now. Briley Meyer wing three. Count it. The Hayden lead up to seven. In the first half, the KU commit, though, getting busy. Zoe Canfield, right-headed floater, got it to go. Second half, now Lauren Sandstrom begins to assert her will. Move in the post, the ball finally falls. Lady Blues staying within shouting distance. Canfield, three cuts the Wildcat lead to just three. Fourth quarter, can Hayden hold on? Sandstrom, spin move to the rack. Count the basket, rock the baby. Mm. The Hayden girls take down Washburn Rural for the first time in over a decade. 46-38, the final Sandstrom scored 22. Sandstrom very popular there tonight. Yeah. Zoe Canfield wasn't so much for those Hayden fans. <laughs> the snow didn't stop the Mustangs from making the trip to Silver Lake. So let's have a game or a little dance there. If I'm an opposing team, I'm really just plotting against Eli Lopez for the whole game. He gets the game started with a nice easy jumper. You can't stop Rock though. No. Dagan Venduska backs his way through the lane and gets to two points there. Coley Burgess takes the ball after, takes it down court, keeps it for himself. He's not dishing it to anyone. Step back three, Ooh. really kind of setting the tone in this game. Lopez does get the ball back, backs his way in, turnaround shot. We're going to count it. He's going to count the foul, and oh, he's going to count man. the basket that he gets Getting after to that, too. the post. Brady Schneider bodying his way through. It's worth it. The layup is good. Brody Dieter to Spencer Johnson, making the corner three look easy right here with Silver Lake. Rock Creek is on a mission tonight, though, and they do achieve that mission. Steal and score here kind of sums it up. The Mustangs win this one 51 to 38. You can't stop Rock. You can't stop Rock. <laughs> I've heard it once or twice. The ladies start the, nice, the night for us. Nothing like a snow day doubleheader to really <laughs> get you it. warmed up. Mackenzie McDaniel gets the ball on the fly, pulls up, drains three. She's pretty happy about that one. Smiling on her way back. On the other end, Rory Pitzer keeps her eye on the ball, has enough space and time to rebound and put back her own shot. Paige Hyman to Taylor Zordel under the net. Easy bucket there. Lucy Martini bounced to Kennedy Whaley. Shot is as solid as a rock, but Silver Lake just cannot be stopped at home tonight. 
The Eagles win big 62 to 28. You can't stop Lake. Maybe you can't that's stop Lake either. Say. <laughs> I'm hey, keep we, going. we go north for a big seven matchup. Holton and Sabatha. Can't stop Holton, couple, can't stop Sabatha. Couple of really good <laughs> football programs, but they're on the court tonight. Pump fake and a good take from Kyler Catherines. Gets the Cats cooking early. More for the home team. Catherines driving, but then dishing it out on this one to Braden Peak. Three ball, nothing but net. Sabetha answers from the outside themselves. Ethan Miller knocking it down. How about more Jays? A nice take on the next one from Zach Wilbar to the hoop. He scores. Later, Kyler Wenger is going to get a bucket, and he got fouled. You're going to see it in a minute. Sabetha gets the win, 67 to 41. Let's stay in Holton for the girls game, if you're all right with that, Laney. I'm totally okay with that. Well, I, I love that shift. I think I we will then. The Lady Jays <laughs> go to the outside early. Alexia Hayden on the dish from Leah Lukert here. Nice Ooh. jumper. It's going down. More Sabetha. Check out the pass on this next one from Hayden to Jillian Stapleton. Lays it in with ease. Good passing. Might have mm -hmm. been a theme in this one. Holton's Brooke Wilcott. To Marley, oh me, oh my. Mm. I'm not sure how to say her name. It's probably one of those, though. <laughs> and she would heat up on the score sheet early. Another one for oh me, or maybe oh my. She, oh me, oh my. She's really good at basketball. She's really, really good. And she's on the passing end of that one. So Natalie Wilcott Holton takes the girls' game 36 23. All right, Hiawatha is making the trip to the Royal Valley tonight. Of course, that's Hoyt, Kansas. And I mean, just look at this guy here. That's the definition of regal <laughs> in the Royal Valley. Nolan Bausch taking this along the baseline, opts for a floater to get things started for us. Carson Beam up to Landon Gilbert. Turnaround shot. Things are really going the Panthers' way Not right now. Not to be now. confused with Landon Reinhardt. He Don't get them confused. They are the same. <laughs> Hiawatha heats up. Dylan Cheek gets the ball in transition, gets it up, and Cameron Boswell. Gets the job done. Connor Kettler gets just needs one bounce to go underhand with it. Matt Buskirk one ups that though, going under the net with a reverse layup. But Hiawatha's one ups that. The Redhawks go home with a win, 70 to 49. And we have the girls game just before Hiawatha and Silver Lake again open the night. Red and blue makes purple, so tonight we get to see who gets to keep their colors. Claire Twombly gets the dish from Kenzie Nelson and gets the layup. Elijah Contreras, hand in her face, doesn't matter. That's three for her. She's not done yet either. Contreras adds a steal to her night, takes it back to the wow, other coast end. coast to coast. And she's going to add a layup to that. And what works, you know, works, I guess. Yeah. We're just going to keep it going. <laughs> Contreras is going to wait a second, figure things out, goes to the line, takes her shot. Royal Valley does come up with a little bit of an answer. It's called ball movement. Mm -hmm. It's always fun. Athena Broadus is digging into the gap. And she's going to add another one and another one on top of that. It's an and one for wow, Broadus. Wow, good bucket. Yeah, Royal Valley keeps at it, but Hiawatha is right there with them. Red Hawks win it 45-30. to 30. I don't think you're just stopping the trip. <laughs> she Period. was good, yeah. yeah. In Tecumseh, the Firebirds meet Lansing. Here comes Heights early. Dylan Sanchez to Ontarius Emmett. Corner three, count it. Skip pass on the next one to the right side. Sanchez shooting this time. The Firebirds catching fire. Mm. And not just from beyond the arc either. And not just Dylan Sanchez. Here's Jarrett Sanchez. Transition, layup, and one. Jarrett gets his. Dylan certainly scored plenty tonight. Another <laughs> triple. The Sanchez bros. Are they? I don't know if they're bros or not. But either way, the Thunderbirds win 76-51. <laughs> right. And the girls game wasn't a whole lot closer, let's be honest. The cheerleaders, though, bringing the energy. As always. KK Emmett bringing the buckets in this one. On the assist from Taylor Breezy. And the transition game going as well. Breezy Kennedy mm. to Cadence mm. Torres. Finishing at the rack. More T-Bird scoring. First shot misses on the next one. But Rihanna Vega, the putback finish. Heights pulling away in this one. They may have already pulled away, but a few more buckets certainly won't hurt. Vega wide open in the post. T-Birds get the sweep, winning the girls game 54-26. Not much better than a home sweep yep. during basketball season. Riverside is at Perry LeCompton. All business, even though it is still winter break for them. Charlie Blosser passed to Katie Bartlett under the bucket, gets a bucket. Now it is Blosser's turn. Fake on the assist, and Ooh. she's through the lane, driving a lot better than a lot of cars were tonight. <laughs> Definitely. They know what to do on defense, too. Allison Farmer block. Farmer gets a defensive rebound after, but Riverside here is going to take it back. Taylor Weischer with the steal and with the score. 
She gets another on Perry LeCompton's inbounds here. Riverside dominates this game, winning 41 to 10. All right, we got some other scores for you from the area tonight. There were some cancellations as well. Rossville, though, at Riley County, the dogs get a sweep on the road, winning the girls game 40 to 33, and the boys with a comeback win 60 to 57. Siemens at Leavenworth, Vikings girl, Viking girls win 56 to 25. Boys win a close one 60 to 55. A sweep for the Vikes. Chapman at Clay Center. Clay Center girls win 50 to 44. A close one there. The boys game goes to overtime. Whew. The Tigers pull through there too, 75 73. And the boys score from Perry LeCompton. The cause take their only January home game 61 to 51. Tried to make it back for that game, but we all know how the roads are. Yeah, tonight, the roads weren't so. great. Kind of uh, stopped us from getting to a few of those games. There was yeah. also some cancellations. Highland Park canceled, mm -hmm. Topeka Hyatt and Poirier canceled. If you didn't Saint see Mary's, your team, Mabunsi, yeah. we probably didn't forget about them. They may have postponed it, and we'll get to it on another Friday. Yeah, sure. we really had to juggle our schedule tonight. But <laughs> good news is there was still plenty of basketball. We're to glad you made it home safe. <laughs> and we're going to wrap yes. up our show right after this break. Don't go anywhere.